Introducing TurboGrafx-16, the next generation video game system. It's four times faster, so the games are more exciting. There are almost ten times as many colors, so the arcade quality graphics are even more intense. And you can expand your system with a CD player for CD games with sound effects that are turbocharged. TurboGrafx-16 from NEC, the higher energy video game system. Oh yes, folks. The Turbo Graphics known in the PAL regions, or of course known as the Turbo Graphics 16, known in the American states. Of course, this is a American unit, or both of these are, as well as the CD attachment and the power deck, which is used to power both units. However, we're going to be focusing today more on this beauty right here. The Turbo Graphics 16. This one's been through a little bit of a scuffed up hell. I got this a while back. I was very happy to grab this game console that is. And well, here's a couple things about this console that you probably know or don't know. First things first, it obviously uses hue cards. And by hue cards, I do mean items similar to like this. Which, of course, this is the Super System card you used to power on your CD attachment. Sadly, mine is on hiatus until I could figure out how to fully fix it. Either way, this unit was powered in man to, of course, have a very simplistic setup. Plugged controller, which, of course, is obviously this big, hulking beast, went into the front of the unit, and generally, you played your games like that. This, of course, is a differently ver modified version of the original controller that NEC developed. At first, it did not even have these, the turbo feature. Then, of course, they just said, here, you have the turbo button, which was a big deal back in the day. Even the controller feels very good on the fingertips. You can actually, it responds and moves and actually feels wide enough and comfortable enough to manufacture good gameplay. Some of its more notable games, of course, is obviously Alien Crush, Bonk's Revenge, Sinistar, World, World Class Baseball. I crap you not, folks. This game is fantastic. But kidding aside, what most people remember having Sonic the Hedgehog as their start and launch game, people had this game, Keith Courage. Which, of course, was not as well received, obviously, as Sonic the Hedgehog or Mario Brothers from the Nintendo generation console that, of course, featured very simplistic design, as far as I was concerned. Very thick chips, and, of course, these are very static-prone, so if you were to rub this against, like, one of those static-based materials, this would actually format itself and make it blank. So, I wouldn't recommend putting this inside of a sock or anything and running across the floor with it. That'd be most uncomfortable for yourself as well as this card. Even though this game, some people hate it, I thought it was cool. So, a lot of licensing for this game, of course, was not well received, obviously, in the States. This, of course, unit was not, again, given as much popularity as you would saw in Japan. However, we did get good games that are pretty much a gem like Action Kung Fu, which had starred Jackie Chan. Jackie Chan is fantastic, because Hudson Soft had something to do with it. I'd do him. But anyway, to compare this to any other console, it'd just like be almost unfair due to the fact that this game got man this console got manufactured solely for gameplay, more than anything else. Granted, the CD attachment, which of course came a little bit later on was gave you the access to listen to CDs on the go, I don't really see myself plugging this into my pocket or having this on top of my desk. It looks kind of weird and quite frankly, yeah. Versus its Japanese counterpart, this of course looks like a Hulk, like a big gigantic Tetris shaped Hulk. However, similar card hue design and of course it looks very fantastic overall. This unit of course had a lot of shooter gems on here as well. If you guys want to compare a lot of good games, again, I'd like to throw out there, obviously, Cinetron, Blazers, 
and other ones is too. It, it's again this console had a beautiful lineup of games. Some of them were flops. Obviously, the Genesis and the Nintendo had those too. I mean, every console has them. Sadly, this console was not well received because of the fact that the Sega Genesis and the Nintendo were battling it out, and it was basically getting humongous ignorance towards the console itself, leaving it short in the dust. Hence why making it a humongous collectible item for most people. Yeah. The CD attachment for this... I'm going to get into this potentially in the next episode or so and discuss more of the games on that. You know, visual quality, presentation, yada yada. That's be a different, different, different. This, however, I'd like to show you a couple games in a little lineup here. At least five. So, hope you guys enjoy those and give me your responses down below. So, take it easy, guys. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 